Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Aaron Hilliard from Mushroom Wonderland. And if you're new to this channel, we talk about mushrooms, mainly wild mushrooms. Today I'm in the Olympic National Forest at uh, the Staircase, uh, just on the southeast side of the Olympic National Forest. I'm gonna be doing a day hike up to the Flapjack Lakes. So this is like an 18 mile in, out and back uh, day hike, which is probably the biggest day hike I've ever done. So I wanna share this hike with you and I'm gonna identify mushrooms along the way. So if you're, a, if you're a forager or if you're a hiker, if you're a camper or an outdoorsman, you know, maybe you'll find value in a video like this to help identify some of the mushrooms you might see along the way. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit subscribe so you can see more videos like this and give a thumbs up if you like content like this and please leave a positive comment so I know where you are and what you'd like to see on upcoming videos and it just kind of helps the algorithm. So again, my name is Aaron Hilliard. I'm the vice president of the local mycological society. I'm the creator of Mushroom Wonderland here and I've just been a mushroom geek my whole life. So let's go into the woods and take a beautiful hike and check out the North Fork of the Skokomish River and see all these uh, beautiful mushrooms that we might find growing here in the forests of Washington State. Come along with me. I'm going to start uh, a tracking app called Strava for a hike. Hit start. Ignore that. So now it marked where I am on GPS location and uh, if nothing else I can find my way back as long as my phone's alive but of course I carry a compass and stuff with me too. One of the first things we encounter when we come in to the trail to the staircase are these plants. It's just like looks like one single leaf per plant. Uh, it's got and it's got three of these leaflets on it, and they're just carpeting the forest floor. These are known as vanilla leaf. So if you dry this out, it actually smells a lot like vanilla. And I guess the indigenous people would use these dried to uh, as an air freshener in their wigwams and stuff. Oh, and then look right here. Big hardy wild strawberry. So I'm not sure if we're gonna see any berries along the way, but these three very serrated leaflets on this plant, wild mountain strawberry. So vanilla leaf and strawberry already, right as we step onto the trail, so exciting. It's called a maiden hair fern. Very beautiful. These right here, these kind of like, uh, they look like the, the star from the land before time. These are called salmon berry. Edible berries that grow prolifically here in the Northwest, no doubt. These are all trail side, so people have picked all the berries. But you can see here some flowers getting ready to make some new salmon berries. Beautiful. It's amazing.
Look at this, a Douglas fir and a western red cedar fused together. This stuff is very commonplace here in the Olympic National Forest. There's another one. See the difference in the bark? So the mushroom we have peeking out of the moss right here is a very common Pacific Northwest mushroom. This is in the genus Amanita. The species is actually Pantheranoides, and they have these white gills, white stem, a little ring on the stem, but most importantly, they're gonna have those white speckles on top of the cap, kind of like the Mario mushroom. So this one's related to that. It should be considered toxic. This is Amanita Pantheranoides. This is a pretty small little specimen, but, uh, but a pretty one. And it has those little white spots on the top of the cap, just like the Amanita muscaria, the red one that has those spots. So, same family. This one should be treated as poisonous, but it's a beautiful one to look at. Big, ancient, beautiful Douglas fir. Look how big and chunky this bark is. This thing fell over in a windstorm, but I actually counted the rings. This is a really nice example of, you can see all of the rings and you could count, you know, each one, one, two, three, work your way all the way out here to the edge. They keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. This is about 290 to 300 years old. So that's a big old mature tree and uh, it's about as big as they get out here before, you know, they just get so top heavy, the soil gets saturated and then they topple over like this. And what's gonna happen is now it created a big, a big gap up here where the sunlight's gonna start hitting this western hemlock and this guy is gonna start growing up and become the main canopy and a uh, new Douglas fir can't really germinate here until a disturbance comes through, like a big forest fire or something. So um, it's got big brothers and sisters all around here. This might've been the mama. And uh, you know, this, this light coming through actually gives a chance to a couple of young Douglas fir saplings, but really all you see is Western hemlock saplings. They call this the Western hemlock zone because eventually Without a disturbance, this forest will no longer have these big Douglas fir, the Pseudosuga menzizi, um, and it will be dominated by the western hemlock. So, but beautiful 300-year-old tree here across the across the way. If you wanted some firewood, there you go. But these rounds would be pretty tough to split. <laughs> So up to my hip and I'm six feet tall, so beautiful tree. Right here we have a bunch of fungus, a brown rot mushroom, eating this dead snag right here. This is a Fomitopsis ochracia, so it's related to the red-belted conch, but it's a little different. You can see this one's got quite a bit of that gutation going on. 
and it's all these driplets of water that's coming out of the bottom of the pore surface of this. It's a polypore, so these shelf mushrooms, super common. You see these growing all over logs, dead logs out here in uh, pretty much every forest in the Pacific Northwest. Um, no known use for this really. It's not known as a medicinal mushroom and it's just too woody to eat. So, um, but it's doing a good job decomposing the dead stumps here in the forest. Fomitopsis acratia. Hiking in the clouds on the way to Flapjack Lake. Lakes. This is way up in the Olympics. You can hear the North Fork of the Skokomish River way down in the valley. Way down there. But we're pretty high up here in the hills now. The trail's been pretty easy going the whole way. I mean, like this, if you call this easy going, which it, it is, fairly, fairly easy trail. Okay, so if you've done any hiking in the Pacific Northwest, no doubt you've seen these growing on the end of a log. And uh, these are probably the most common fungus you're gonna see in uh, the Pacific Northwest, uh, known as a shelf fungus or a conch fungi. These are uh, known as the red-belted conch. The scientific name is Fomitopsis monsiae. Most older field guides are gonna call it Fomitopsis pinnacola, but that's, uh, that's actually a taxonomy from the Euro Euro European variety of these or the, or the North, uh, I mean, the East Coast variety of these is known as, uh, let me try that again. But Fomitopsis pinnacola is actually the European variety and since uh, DNA sequencing has been available, we've discovered that these aren't the same thing that uh, were in all of those old like Autobahn Society books and stuff. So these ones, uh, some people claim that they have medicinal properties, although uh, not many people think that. And uh, there's so many of them. I mean, you could take it down off the log and like make it into a tea or a tincture, but I've just never really heard any proof or any evidence that shows that they're medicinal. But what they do do is they um, chew up all the white cellulose in this wood. So you can see this like, it looks like little cubicle stacks of wood in here. And that's because the mycelium of this mushroom is running all through this log. It's eating all the sugars, all that white cellulose. And it's just leaving behind this brown part. Eventually this log is gonna get so eaten that the log is just gonna fall apart and become soil for new trees to grow in. So it's really, really important that these mushrooms are here because these huge old growth trees, when they fall down, they need to turn back into soil quick enough so it's not just like, you know, hundreds of feet deep of, of wood. If these mushrooms weren't here, it would just be like a pile of pickup sticks all the way to the sky. So really important mushrooms for the forest, maybe not so much for humans, but if you're walking in the forest, you're definitely gonna see these. It's called the red-belted conch, Fomitopsis monsiae. Here's another red belted conch. This one, it's more clear why it's called that. See, it's got a red belt on the outer edge of it. And they're growing all up this tree, or this old stump, I should say. So, despite this beautiful hike being lush with trees and vegetation, I'm not seeing much fungal life. But we do always have Fomitopsis monsiae the conch mushroom, a shelf mushroom, whatever you want to call this, uh, the red belted conch, ever present all year round in the forests of Washington. came across this interesting mushroom right here growing on this coniferous stump and uh, we're way up here in the Olympics now on our way to Flapjack Lakes and so the mushrooms have been like a little bit sparse as we've got higher up here into the clouds it's like continually misting making a lot of moisture so it's making mushrooms grow and so these are an interesting one um, if you look at these they're kind of caramel colored and when they're wet they look kind of slimy they have very like stout little stems on them and 
It's a beautiful little mushroom, but this is known as Gallerina marginata. The common name is the funeral bell because this is uh, one of the few deadly poisonous mushrooms that you're going to find in Washington State. If you look under there, you'll see there's a little ring um, that attaches to the edge of the cap. This ring just broke away. This is going to have kind of a reddish brown spore print. And then on the bottom of the stipe, you see all these little fibrils, they're called. Uh, it's just kind of like, like white little hairs or chevron patterns on the bottom of the stipe. Very slimy. And, uh, and it's always grown on wood like this, and especially on conifer in Washington State or the Pacific Northwest, like Oregon, British Columbia, Northern California. So these could be confused with a psilocybe cyan essence. Um, or another mushroom we're going to look at in a minute that I saw down the trail called the Kyrneomyces or the false funeral bell and those ones are actually edible but not for novice uh, mushroom foragers. This one is not to be played with. Uh, one ounce can kill an adult human. It contains the same toxins that death caps have so it's got amatoxins in it and they will uh, attack your liver and your kidneys and once uh, you know once once you've eaten them and started to feel this, the symptoms of the sickness, there's, uh, there's not much turning back, especially if you're way out here in the forest, if you're like backpacking and hiking and you're like, let's pick some mushrooms and forage and, and have a good time and you eat some of these and you start to feel the effects up here. By the time you get back into civilization, it's probably too late. So Gallerina, one of the most, probably the most deadly native mushroom to Washington State. Um, the Gallerina marginata or the funeral bell. So it's okay to pick them and to look at them, um, but do not swallow this mushroom. Uh, so always kind of fun to find uh, super deadly mushrooms as it is to find choice edible mushrooms. Beautiful uh, waterfalls cascading down these mountains and on the side of this big Douglas fir right here. We've got what is known as the Northwest Reishi Mushroom or a Ganoderma organensi. It's a, called the Varnish Conk, some people call it. I'm going to pick this one. Look at that. So this is a, one of what's known as a, a sessile Ganoderma. So it's got this lacquered look that's known as sessile. This one's old. You can see the poor surface on a fresh one would be white. And they even have like a yellowish colored outer edge. And people make these into a tea or a tincture. Supposedly, uh, you know, in China, they call this the, the lingzi or the, the mushroom of immortality because it's supposed to re reverse the effects of, of uh, oxidation. So it's supposed to slow down the aging process via anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, all kinds of medicinal properties, supposedly, allegedly. So I'm not a doctor. And I can't speak to the truth of any of that. But a cool mushroom if you're into foraging mushrooms and you see these beautiful, it looks like it was lacquered or varnished with some kind of a varnish, very shiny, especially when it's wet. But uh, these are an annual mushroom. So this is last year's fruiting body. And uh, so they grow, they start growing in the spring and they'll grow throughout the summer. They, it, this dropped its spores last fall and winter and now uh, it's probably full of bugs and, and rotting. So. It's not going to harm anything to pluck it off. All it's doing is eating inside of this huge dead tree right here. But uh, but the uh, Northwest Reishi mushroom, always a cool one to find. There's another one growing right above it on that same tree. But we're going to give this back to nature. But uh, but always a cool one to be able to identify and maybe use if you find a fresher specimen. So there you go. Right here, trail side, right up near the Flapjack Lakes. I see this coming out of the soil, and I can tell by looking there, it looks looks like a cauliflower. Should be called the cauliflower mushroom, but this is a coral mushroom in the genus Ramiria. And uh, some of them are claimed to be good edible. Some of them will give you gastrointestinal distress. So I tend to avoid them, but they sure are pretty. And these yellow ones are really common in Eastern Washington in the Cascade Range. So. A little surprised to see them at a pretty high elevation here in the Olympic Mountains, but a Ramiria or a coral mushroom, probably better to just avoid those. Some of them have microscopic features that 
you need to see to determine their edibility. And I don't have a microscope here, so we're going to leave the Ramiria or coral fungus behind. Just ran into a little snow on our hike. It means we're pretty high up here in the Olympics, probably 42 to 4,500 feet elevation. Olympic wilderness and flapjack lakes. Wow. This is one of Flapjack Lakes. You hear some serious uh, waterfalls up here. This water is beautiful. Alright, so what we got growing here on this log, they look uh, a bit like those funeral bells that we were looking at, the Gallerina marginata. But these ones are missing that ring. They've got a darker stem. And these ones are known as uh, Cuneromyces, and these are uh, called the false funeral bells. So you can actually eat these ones. But they look so much like the Gallerina, and they grow on wood just like Gallerina would. They've got that caramel color cap on them. Um, but these just have a brown spore print where the Gallerina have kind of a rusty orange spore print. And those also have the, the little chevron pattern hairs, uh, fibrils on the stipe. These ones don't have that. They don't have the ring and they often get kind of uplifted like this. They look a bit like a cyanescence or something, but, uh, but these ones you could eat. And I, I guess they're a good edible and there's quite a big flush of them right going on right here. So if we were hungry, we could pick these, but if you don't know what you're doing, and you pick a whole bunch of these and uh, they happen to be Gallerina, it is lights out for you. So any of these, uh, you know, some people call them LBMs, little brown mushrooms, even hallucinogenic mushrooms fall into that category. Uh, just safe to avoid these unless you really know what you're doing. But the Curneomyces lingoncola, they grow here in the Northwest in the spring and here it is early summer. And there's a big fruiting of them all over the wood down in here. So a good edible mushroom but not for the beginning forager. It moved. There it goes. A mountain grouse. Cool as that. So what I found here trail side is a little bit surprising because I always find these in the fall. But if you look right here, this is a uh, this kind of big brown mushroom is an amanita. It's growing here in the summertime in Washington State. This is known as a Western Grisette. So it's one of the rare edible amanitas that we have here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, the genus amanita is huge and around the world there's many edible amanitas and really tasty ones, but up here pretty much uh, the rule is to leave them alone. So this mushroom has some identifying characteristics and I'm gonna dig up the whole base of it and everything so that I can show you uh, all the identifying features of this amanita. Can you see it? So it's like coming out of this sack. You see the sack here? This is called the vulva. And, uh, and it kind of starts out like a little egg. 
And this is uh, just how a death cap grows too. It's got this sack that the mushroom actually grows out of. So it's like a little egg in the ground and then this bursts out of that. Now this Amanita doesn't have any kind of a ring on it, which is sort of unusual for an Amanita. And it's gonna have a white spore print. You know, this looks kind of gray. These gills look sort of gray. But if you laid this on a piece of paper or glass, it would have a white spore print. So this little sack on the bottom is total indicator of an Amanita. And uh, deadly Amanitas also have this sack. But this one, the Western Grisette is an edible Amanita. And I'm surprised to see it growing here in the spring. And this one is uh, pretty clean of insects and stuff. So it doesn't have much of an odor, although I'm eating a Grape Jolly Rancher right now. But uh yeah, this is, a, this is a good find, and you could definitely cook this up and eat it. But just be aware, if you see one of these sacks on the bottom of a white Amanita, it's potentially really, really deadly. So leave that behind, but kind of a cool find. So I'm going to replant that. It'll still drop spores for a while. So pretty little mushroom, the Western Grisette. One day I'll invest in a really nice gimbal. All right, y'all, just starting to get close to the parking lot. Back from this 18 mile day hike out to Flapjack Lakes and back. Hopefully you enjoyed that hike and uh, maybe you want to check that one out. I'm feeling pretty good. My feet are a little bit tired, but we saw some cool mushrooms along the way, some beautiful waterfalls and amazing sights. So again, thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland and we'll see you on the next episode. Much love everyone.